Day 2, a study in Proverbs. We'll be in Proverbs chapter 2. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from His mouth come a knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of His saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech, who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. So you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death, and her paths to the departed. None who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of the good, and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inhabit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. Our verse for consideration today is verse 3. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. You know what I'm leery of? Those commercials that promise big results. You know the ones, the chiseled bodies of those 0% body fat athletes working out on those gizmos that you ride or lift or pull or contort your bodies to get you into shape. And those contraptions you buy for your kitchen that promise to transform your ordinary meals into something from those cooking shows. Or those supplements that are designed to help your, uh, uh, what's that thing? Uh, oh, your memory. They're just too good to be true. In today's passage, Solomon makes a pretty big promise. Can it be that simple? Just want it and you can have it? Well, that's the problem with advertising. Very seldom do you see an ad that says, if you work out on this machine endlessly, day after day, you'll get that body. Or if you study cooking and cuisine for years, you could use this device. Or take this pill for an extended period and you'll get, uh, you'll get, uh, oh no, I forgot what that pill's supposed to get. But you'll get it. Does Solomon promise immediate results effortlessly? <laughs> no. Look at the process. First, you must receive his words, and that's not as easy as it sounds. Then you must treat it like a treasure, something of great value. Then you must be actively listening for wisdom. You must stretch out your heart towards understanding. Cry for it. Scream for it if you must. You must seek it as if it were an ancient expedition searching for precious metals or hidden treasures that must be unearthed. Does that sound easy? You think this is a five-minute exercise in the morning while you're rushing to get on with your day? Absolutely not. This is a consuming desire, yes, an obsession to get wisdom. My eyes have been attentive in the scriptures for the if-then propositions, and there are dozens and dozens in the Bible. They typically follow the, if you do this, good or bad, then you can expect this. Consequently, again, good or bad. If, and it all hinges on that one word, if, if you listen and take in those words and commandments and listen to wisdom and seek out understanding, call out for knowledge, like as it were men seeking worldly treasures, then the promise comes. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. It sounds rather familiar, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly what James admonishes to us. 
James 1 verses 5 through 8 tells us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all, without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, and with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. In its essence, that is what Jesus taught in the Beatitudes. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, Jesus tells us, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. If I'm really honest with myself, the reason those gizmos and contraptions and potions don't work is more than likely my own lack of desire and motivation. James says I must pursue this desire for wisdom with faith, and faith is not just a mere belief, but an active one. Jesus says, if I hunger and thirst, I will be filled. Hunger and thirst are two of the most powerful forces in the human realm. The psalmist writes, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2. And again the psalmist writes in Psalm 107, verse 9, For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. The payoff for this acquisition of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes when they watch over you and protect you from the ways of evil, verse 12, from men who walk in darkness, verse 13, and from the forbidden woman whose ways lead to death, verses 16 through 19. What we get is not just information for information's sake, but that which enriches life. Are you ready for a treasure hunt today? And Lord willing, we'll meet again tomorrow.